Major, let's start with this Bloomberg announcement and the reason he gave for not running. He said, as the race stands now with Republicans in charge of both houses, there is a good chance that my candidacy could lead to the election of Donald Trump or Senator Ted Cruz. That is not a risk I can take in good conscience. Break that down for us, Major. Well, it's awfully complimentary, in my opinion, to what Michael Bloomberg could have accomplished as a third party candidate. It assumes based on polling that their agents did, meaning those who work for Bloomberg in 22 states were told that Michael Bloomberg would have been a serious competitor for the popular vote and would have racked up a good number of electoral votes by winning certain states. I'm not sure that's true. Bloomberg believes it to be true. It's quite possible that Bloomberg would have won some number of votes. He argues he would have taken more from Republicans from Democrats. I also disagree with that. I think Bloomberg's appeal, particularly on the question of reducing gun violence and using the regulatory apparatus of the federal government as he used it with the city government in New York to improve health issues and address issues related to health, whether it's obesity or nicotine or anything else, would have attracted more Democratic voters than Republican voters. But setting all that aside, the essence of Bloomberg's argument is a third party candidate would have made it more likely to shift the vote into the House of Representatives, which is the body that decides a vote in this country if there is no electoral vote winner with 270 electoral votes. By that math, Michael Bloomberg is essentially telling the country, I would have won a bunch of states, just not enough. Again, I'm not sure that's true. That he believes it's true is certainly a fact, but I think he's giving himself far more credit than he deserves as an untested entity in American presidential politics. And the fact that he's not running doesn't really jostle the Republican race one bit. I think it does slightly jostle the Democratic race because now Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders know there is not this specter of Bloomberg out there that they know possibly better than Bloomberg is willing to admit, would have taken votes away from either one of them should they have been the Democratic nominee. All right, let's talk about Donald Trump. He has a decisive lead in the primary states Tuesday. No particularly close races. But what insights could Tuesday give about Trump's prospects in the next states? Well, let me caution you a little bit about that <clears throat> as far as Tuesday is concerned. Four contests, Idaho, Hawaii, Mississippi, and Michigan. You are 100% right, Elaine. Michigan and Mississippi set up very well for Donald Trump. I've talked to the Rubio and Cruz campaigns today. They do not expect to win either of those two states. They expect Trump to win both Michigan and Mississippi. Idaho is a place where both Rubio and Cruz have campaigned, and because it's a caucus state, those tend to work better for Cruz and his ground game operations, so look for Cruz possibly to have a good night in Idaho. As for Hawaii, I have no clue, and it's your fault, and it's everyone's fault at CBS because I keep begging to go out to Hawaii to find out what the heck is going on there, and nobody lets me go to Hawaii. To conduct your so own polling? So I'm blind. Yeah. I'm blind on Hawaii, and it's everyone's fault, not mine. Okay, okay fine. Duly noted, Major. Duly noted. We'll, we'll take that under advisement. All right, let's, let me ask you about this. A super PAC supporting Ted <clears> Cruz. <throat> this is interesting. Is launching a series of attack ads against Marco Rubio in Florida. Yes. You know, that's despite Rubio not even leading in that state. What is the strategy there? To knock Rubio out of this race once and for all. Look, the Cruz campaign for about five seconds toyed with the idea of a gentleman's agreement not campaigning hard in Florida, or if it did campaign hard in Florida, do it only in the place where Trump is running well ahead of Rubio, meaning the upper part of the state, the northern part of the state, the Florida panhandle, where the voters tend to be much more conservative. If Cruz were campaigning there and only there, then you could argue maybe he's trying to take some votes away from Trump to help Rubio. Cruz is not doing that one bit. He wants Rubio to lose Florida, knock him out of the race, and get a mano a mano race against Trump as soon as possible. And that's why Cruz is making such a strong play for Florida. I will tell you, there are those in the Cruz camp who advised against this, but they were swiftly put to the sidelines. Cruz and his inner circle said, no, we're going to play hard in Florida. We want to knock Rubio out of this race because we want to get a setup race with us and, tr and Trump as soon as possible. And the sooner Rubio's out of that, out of this race, the sooner we can accomplish that. Uh, Major, what is the cost benefit analysis essentially <clears throat> for Marco Rubio in Florida? The benefit obviously is the prospect of getting 99 delegates, but could a loss at home hurt Marco Rubio's political future? It could. It would make it difficult for him to run for governor in 2018 
it would make it difficult for him to say, you know what, I should be someone's running mate because I can deliver the state of Florida. It would complicate his political future considerably. The stakes are high for Marco Rubio, not just in the context of this presidential campaign, but whatever future political ambitions he might have. And if there is one constant thread through Marco Rubio's career in politics, ambition is one of them. And so his ambitions are on the line come next Tuesday, not tomorrow, but the week following Tuesday. All right, Major Garrett in Washington for us. Major, I'll see what I can do about that Hawaii <laughs> polling. I'll take that to management. I'll let you know. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elaine. <laughs> do your best, will yes, you please? Yes, I will. Thanks. <laughs>